<laughs> hey, it's Owen from Enmore Audio, and today we're going to be demonstrating the Sound ID reference system from Sonarworks. It's a company out of Latvia, and this is a room correction and headphone correction piece of software to enhance your studio listening environment. Since the advent of audio recording, engineers have attempted to have a perfect playback system. So ideally in a modern recording situation, we're going to have completely flat speakers and headphones, but this does not exist in real life. So Sonarworks have stepped in to try and create a piece of software which will correct any problems our speakers, headphones or room may impart on what we're listening to. In my own studio, I know my monitors really well, I feel I do anyway. And when I work in other spaces, I take reference tracks with me to try and get used to the environment and the speakers I'm about to work on. There's other engineers like Andrew Sheps, who famously used to take tannoys with him everywhere he went to work. Although now I think he's just switched to headphone mixing, which is a whole different subject, which we could maybe talk about another time. The plugin that we have here should be leveling the play field, so to speak, of what we are working with. When you move to another studio, you want to hear a flat response, so you know your mixes will translate from people's cars, to phones, to their playback systems. I should mention the space we're working in today. This is the in-house Enmore Audio mixing and production room. It's where we do a lot of tracking and mixing every day for all sorts of artists. It was designed by an Australian studio designer, John Sayers, and uh, he's done a lot of rooms around the country and they always look great and they always sound good too. It'd be very interesting to see what the Sonarworks does for this space. All right, here's the mic that comes with the software. You can apparently use any measurement mic with the software, but we've got the legit one here that they've sent to us. You'll notice an ID number on the side that accounts for the exact microphone's specific frequency response deficiency and quirks, because not all microphones have the exact same frequency response, even those of the same model from the same manufacturer. They are all a little bit different. In addition to speaker and room correction, this software also does headphone correction with preset curves taken from an average of a number of headphones they've sampled. They've got a couple hundred in the database, but we're gonna focus mainly on speakers today. And you could ask, why don't they just do preset curves for speakers? It's because the room itself affects how the speakers sound in our ears, whereas the headphones are more of an expressway straight into your ear. You can use this piece of software as a standalone app to listen back to YouTube, Spotify, or any streaming platforms you like. And it also exists as a plugin, which we're gonna focus on today, because we're gonna look at some audio that I've recorded and see how my mixing might change thanks to this plugin. Firstly, let's try the app using the Genelex here and see what difference the software makes. For this process, you'll need the microphone and a preamp to provide phantom power to the mic. Plus, you'll need to make sure your system is set at 44.1K sampling rate to make it work correctly. We're setting up the reference microphone to calibrate our speakers for the Sound ID reference from Sonarworks. It says to carry the mic around by hand, but I'm gonna put it in a stand because the stand is much better at holding a mic still than I am. Let's start the setup process and see what happens. All right, we have 48 volts running. We have our mic input not connected to the speaker outputs. We have an interface being used and we have 44.1 kilohertz sample rate. All right, we have our mic ID entered in here. Here is our calibration profile of the mic. You'll see there's a little bit of a bump at 10K up here. All right, tap the mic. It works. Our output channel works. Here's our... Please adjust the volume of your output device. My voice should sound at normal conversation volume. Left speaker. Right speaker. All seems in order. All right, let's adjust our microphone gain. And here's what the signals we're about to hear sound like. All right. All right, we have our microphone positioned in our listening spot, exactly where I usually sit to listen to this mixes music. Microphone at ear level. It's pointed between the speakers. All right, count down and we'll start testing this thing. All right, adjust the input gain. One's happy. A bit more, right? Eh? All 
<laughs> All right, thumbs up. We're good. All right, I'm going to whip it out of the stand just for this. All right, that's how you hold the microphone. Here we go. One to two centimeters away. Stay where you are. Measurements in progress. Left speaker done. Okay. All right, other side. Stay where you are. Measurements in progress. Right speaker done. All right. Check it out. 74 centimeters. I'll put a little tape measure in just to uh, see if the computer is accurate here. Let's have a look. Yeah, it's spot on. Next, listening spot. Right here where my head is all day. Okay. We're pointed between the speakers. Let's go. Sixty-seven feet centimeters, huh? <laughs> yep, it's exactly right again. All right, we're measuring the listening area. This is the activity part. Let's uh, go for it. All right, it's going to tell me what to do for a bit. Here we go. Thirty-seven positions. One more. Okay, we did it. All right. A frequency response curve. There's some uh, very interesting uh, bumps and dips. You know, it's a properly designed acoustic room, so it's crazy to see this. I guess it's a mix between deficiencies in the speakers themselves and ones in the room that are evoked by maybe the walls, maybe some of the equipment we've got in here. We'll call this, um, Genelec test. All right, our profile is saved and now we can start using it for mixing and also listening back to any kind of music we want. You'll notice that we have now analyzed the room and the software has created an inverse EQ to compensate for any deficiencies in the room and the speakers. I also earlier set one up for the Mackie speakers we've got here and I'm using one for the HD650 headphones just so we can get a taste of what each of these look like in their EQ profile. I know that sometimes my mixes don't translate exactly how I want. We sometimes have problems with snare drums sitting in the mix right, sometimes male vocalists baffle me a little bit. I have to go listen to them on a few different systems to see if they work right in within the mix. Let's take a look and see what happens.
there's a few other options in here. There's a customizable EQ for you to set yourself and a low and high pass, which will stop the compensation from happening to your EQ setting. Now let's take a look through some of these preset speaker settings and check how our mixes translate to headphones, laptop speakers, a phone speaker, studio speakers such as Auratones or Yamaha NS10s, and even car speakers. This is something that really appeals to me, hopefully no more checking mixes in my car, on my phone, or one of my favourites on the TV in my lounge room. There's a few additional features we should quickly look at while we're here. There's a zero latency option. I've gone for a linear phase as the latency is only about 43 milliseconds. There's also a mixed option as an in-between point. There's a mono switch so you can mono your mix through the plugin. You can swap size between left and right. There's a saved headroom option which will prevent clipping once you've made a correction curve in case of large troughs and peaks. There's a listening spot which accounts for delays between the two speakers themselves in your room and there's some frequency limiting also. All right, it's really noticeable the difference that this custom EQ setting has made. I wasn't sure what to expect at first, but this has definitely made a huge difference to the work I'm doing in here. I'd previously had problems with setting snares within this room and male vocals too. For some reason, I couldn't figure it out. And based on this curve, it looks like we had a small dip around 1K, which was affecting these. And it's pretty wild. I mean, I'm probably gonna consider getting this for my own studio too. I'm a little paranoid about it now because have I been missing all sorts of things in my mixes that I should have been noticing. And the other thing that I love about it is the preset speaker system inside so I can listen to what it might sound like on a phone speaker or a laptop. And hopefully I won't have to do that at home anymore. I think it's pretty good. I hope this helps people with their mixing and their listening environments. I found it really helpful and I wasn't sure how it was gonna turn out. Until next time, thanks for tuning in.